I was at uh, Tim Young's last night by default. Uh, oh, nice. Death metal guy, you know, Tim. Uh, yeah, yeah, an amazing drummer. Fuck, he's a beast, man. He thinks yeah, yeah. no one, he thinks everybody just, he thinks that no one knows him. He's like, nobody, and not an ego part, but his playing. I'm like, yeah. He's like, no one cares. I'm like, what are you talking about? You're oh, man, dude, come on. like, Vital oh, Remains, I think. Uh... Give me the conquering. Yeah, that Vital is what led me to Suffo. That's, that's oh. how I'm sitting here right now because uh, he did Conquering the Throne. And I was out with Dying Fetus, and then I met Tim. And while I was out with Deeds of Flesh, uh, when I was playing with Death, we were playing with Death. Um, oh, wow. I met the Decrepit Birth guys, and they had a cassette of End Time Begins, the the title track, or was it a Rebirth of Consciousness, track four or five on the record, five, I believe. And uh, it's been a long time. But uh, <laughs> when I had met Tim, when I was out with Kevin Talley and Dying Fetus, Tim was the he had done the conquering the throne with Rutan and the Haiti Eternal album. And I was like, he's the only guy that I think that could do this. And when I met him in Rochester, when I was out playing with Dying Fetus, that got me to Tim. And then I thought, let me get Tim into Decrepit. And we flew him out to Santa Cruz for two weeks. And then when he went home, he got the vital gig and Benton didn't want to play bass. And so Tim called me to go do that. And then we were playing Milwaukee Metal Fest. And suffocation shows up, and then yeah. Suffo pulled me. So I was like, yeah. "Wow, this chain of events is one of them missing." <laughs> wow, I wouldn't be sitting here right now, Dude, you know, if you one know, of those you're... things missed. You know, so I'm very fortunate. I'm very, very fortunate to have the path that I that I had that I got. No, nah, that's a crazy whirlwind, uh, and like this probably happened in the span of what? Uh, how how would you think? Just like bam, all one thing that in- all that that I just described was all within a year Ooh, all man. of that was like within a year or two year span yeah. that, that, shaped, that must just that flew shaped, by that shaped my the last 20 years has flown by that part that i just mentioned all mm-hmm. felt like one minute you know like in that 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 thing but uh yeah because we played suffo played down in uh daytona daytona beach florida over the weekend and then that got me stuck i gave up my spot for our guitar tech and uh I fly through, I'm super fortunate, not what I'm trying to talk about here, but I ended up getting stuck and taking a flight of all places out to Cali because I couldn't get back to New York. So I ended up staying the night with Tim and then flying back this morning. So that's yeah. that's uh, the weekend. I just got back from the weekend just now. <laughs> it's crazy, sick and say, man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Derek Boyer of motherfucking Suffocation. How you doing? Doing well, doing well, getting ready to take off in uh, in two days, going down to do uh, like a week and a half down in Mexico. All Super right. fucking excited about that. Fuck yeah, we love it. We love it down there. We fucking love it down there. Those, the word fan drives, derives from fanatic. Mm-hmm. And through the truest fan on this planet that we have seen is the Latin American people. They're the nice. fucking insane best. They're our best. There are satanic Hispanics and we love them. Satanic Hispanics. Yeah. Shout out to my gente Latino. I love my raza right there. Hell yeah. Mexico always represents. Yeah. These fans are oh. rabid, man. They're intense. Oh my God, yeah. man. If we were not on any sort of schedule, I would be able to go on and on and on, like pulling in late <laughs> and they surround your fucking transport and they're fucking like so excited. They're fucking, oh, we're going over. Us. They're going to fucking, and then a shotgun goes off and the fucking crowd parts. And then the promoter turns to you and says, okay, when I open the door, run. Run. And you're like, what? <laughs> this is not like a show in fucking Wyoming. <laughs> you know, no. that shit yeah. don't happen. You know, so, and like when you pull up and there's more people outside than inside and you're like, what the fuck? And the promoter's like, they can't afford it. And we're like, well, fuck, what are we going oh, to wow. do? What can we do? Can we give shirts? What can we do if they can't enjoy it? And then you start. And the fucking place is mobbed. They bum rushed the they fucking rush. front. They broke the fucking doors. They suffer started. Let's go. And there's the best people. Sorry for the damage to the building, but <laughs> fuck yes, best show. You know. Wow, crazy, best, crazy man. Best, best fan. And nothing against any of the other fans. We love all our fans equally. Those right. motherfuckers just know how to turn it on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I 
hate to say it, but I mean, we're, we're fortunate, like in, in America or, you know, yeah. especially out here in LA, man, we're kind of spoiled, Oil. man. Oil. It's, a, it's a, yeah. I know to the point where it's like a little bit oversaturated, you know, Mexico and especially like in Europe, it's like, dude, these fucking people, they travel distances for their favorite bands, man. Like it's, at least an hour or a whole day or like, you know, a couple of days yeah. worth of travel. Right. Absolutely. We've had, we've been in places where these motherfuckers, the closest, and I mean motherfuckers with the highest respect. Yeah. I don't think any will. Oh, these motherfuckers. No, yeah. these sick motherfuckers yeah. will fly. Like we were somewhere in the closest, we were in Florida and they fucking flew from Central America because it was close enough and they were in a position of they could do it. And we're like, fuck yeah, let's get you some beers. Like come drink yeah. our shit. You know? Stop spending your own money. You spend enough of your own money. Come and drink on us, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're fortunate to be that tight with our fans too. Like uh, yeah. here, a lot of other bands are too cool to fucking, or they want some mystique. Fuck that. I'm the same yeah, as man. you, I'm the same as this motherfucker. We're the same. Yeah. So come and be with us, you know? And I think that that matters. I think the, the people know the suffocation. We're not, Phone, 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 we're real we're real yeah. you guys are approachable and personable and like you know that's yeah. that's important man i mean well, as great as musicians you guys are like the the the, the stage the way you dominate the stage off stage you guys are like personable and totally chill real people yeah yeah, yeah. y'all all real people i don't care if somebody has put a lot of time in they're not better than anyone else as a human you know mm -hmm. maybe they put their fingers to work and put their passion that's great but that doesn't make them better than you. They may be better, uh -huh. but not better as a fucking human. We're all the same, you know? So I like to always keep that real, real. Mm -hmm. We're all real, you know? Yeah, stay humble, man. And like, uh, it, it. It, 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 it translates into your art, I think. Oh, yeah. Too. So people can tell oh, right yeah. away. It's like, nah, what a snob, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but again, we're talking here with Derek of motherfucking Suffocation. We're talking the new album, Hymns from the Apocrypha, coming out in November through Nuclear Blast. I've been cranking this since I got it. Um, the fans, I got to tell you, you guys are going to be in for a treat. This one, oh, yeah. I really, I really, I feel like it really uh, captures the organic sound that I love of suffocation. Going back to, you know, the, the self-titled album, your debut. Yeah. Um, now of the light was a great release and it was Frank's last uh, contribution to the band, you know, Frank. Yeah. His last studio. His last studio effort. I want to mm -hmm. say he did uh, that live in North America would have been his last actual release. But yes, you are correct. Sorry. Mm -hmm. What did you guys do differently on this record than Of The Light? I think, I think what's really important, and I will pick a stage with 10 people in the crowd over a recording uh, from my, uh, how am I going to spend my hour? I would prefer to be on a stage and I don't care if it's a thousand people or 50 people. I would rather be on a stage than in a studio. And I think it's uh, after all this time, getting comfortable. I, I want to make natural mistakes that I can correct in real time. I feel like of all the studio work I've done, you know, from way back in the 90s where the recordings were not as easy. Like today, these bands can go note by note or correct a performance like that's not what suffocation you know live you don't get to correct it you have no. to do your best that's what i like so when it comes to <clears throat> studio for me i'm thinking this time around we really captured that that live energy <clears throat> and for me i think it's uh if you don't like your performance do it again if you don't like someone else's performance let's hope there's not enough uh there's enough camaraderie brotherhood lacking ego where you can tell each other, hey, man, I've seen you do this better. Come on, give me another chance. Instead of going, hey, uh, you fucked that up. You know, it's, it's all about approach. Yeah. And yeah. So getting good performances out of each other. And, you know, you know, is the song good, yes or no? Is the performance good, yes or no? And is the production good, yes or no? And we captured it right here. That Nothing last... against any of the guys that have produced Suffocation Records because Scott Burns, legend, Joe Sincata yeah. learned his way and worked his way through the... But by the end, we were kind of using their facilities to produce ourselves smart as fuck goes hey i want i want to have my own place we can do suffocation whenever we want right now we can cut a single right now with zero dollars you know like terrence has put the investment into massive microphone collection a lot of outboard analog equipment analog i mean we're old school we don't want 
plugins and inserts <laughs> you know right. those are great but we would rather have real Not for your sound of, yeah and you know maybe you can get our sound digitally but we want the old we want the raw and there's a bit of the modern yeah, stuff yeah. sure you can't you can't ignore the modern stuff because exactly. it's it's out there and you don't want to get left behind but in our world <laughs> let's do a hybrid let's do a hybrid and you know keep moving yeah you mentioned a point uh you and terrence pretty much had a really hands-on experience with this album you guys i guess have uh, your own studio going on yeah uh, inline studio in long island yeah we're in long island new york and uh we live in this uh three bedroom two bath house with a two-car garage we're very fortunate we work hard and it's not ours Beautiful. but we work for it and uh yeah. upstairs are the rooms and the kitchens and the living rooms bathrooms and then downstairs there's other bathrooms and showers and full recording studio right here nice. right through that right through that door so this is where we do it and uh it's set up rehearsal wise or i drag yeah. you through there but uh i can still drag you through there at the end Sure, sure. That'd be cool, man. This is the house that Suffo built. This is <laughs> awesome. our headquarters, House of Suffo. Yeah. Very, very cool. And it's 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 kind of a going back to like a, a DIY situation where you're doing it all yourself and you you know you have you have an idea of what you want it to sound like. You have an idea of uh, the end product, you know. That's, that's who it. who better than you, the, the band member itself? You know? That's really what Terrence had been preaching for the longest time. And not to say Scott Burns didn't help create their sound, yeah. but they brought their and the whole stuff. death metal on genre. Yeah, Scott Burns for, like, that. Scott for that one. Yeah, we just had we had the fortune of having a uh, played in front of Scott down in Florida last time when we came through with Death to All. And Sick. Terrence was like, Come on, man, come mix the album. And we played him our pre production. He was like, you don't even need me. You guys are doing great on your own. And well, he was <laughs> like, you fuck you. he was like, fuck you. And I was like, no way. That's an amazing <laughs> that's a compliment. Like, oh, you're bullshitting me. And he was like, I'm not, man. I've known you a long time. I ain't fucking with you. You know? So again, yeah. unless he was to do it from the jump, if he was to, from the very first note recorded, it would probably be the only way he'd be interested to, to, for us to hand him a bunch of files. He doesn't know we're not going to, Send him a bunch of random shit, and now he's got to make his reputation come through. Yeah, you know. So the fact that he complimented the the direction we'd been doing on our own, yeah, gave me another confidence boost that okay, we're gonna be able to do this, you know. And then handing it over to Christian Donaldson, who mixed the and mastered the live album "Farewell Frank North America." We mm -hmm. just worked with them, so that all worked out great too. Very fucking cool, man. And uh, salute to Scott Burns, man. Uh, yeah. a, a legend in, in death metal. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, and another legend, Frank, of course. Fuck yeah. Hand chops to him. How's yeah. Frank doing? You talk that's to him awesome. much? He lives a three-minute car ride. What is that? East of here. You just get in the car, get on the ride, bang, you're at his house. So we were over there the other day chilling with him and Doug Cerrito, of all people. It was oh, fucking shit. sick. Yeah, it was funny as hell. I got to tell us two seconds. Uh. So I had the new record. Frank had heard it. And uh, Doug was there, we'll barbecue and drinking, having a blast. And I had started the record. Cerrito comes walking out and he's like, Yo, everybody, shut the fuck up. Derek, start that shit over. And he made me start it <laughs> over so he could sit through the whole thing. It was great, yeah. man. But we're, we're really fortunate to, again, that ego thing is doesn't exist within us or around us. We're all people. And uh, yeah. we are good friends with Doug, Frank. Smith, everybody, you know, all the guys, Guy, everybody, Josh, everybody, you know, Doug, every, all Doug and Doug, you know, everybody that's been a part of this. When we were inducted in Long Island's Music Hall of Fame, okay. sitting, Salt and Pepper was sitting in our seats. Oh, but like, wow. us, ladies, uh, you sure you don't want your dope ass seats over there? I mean, we'll take them if you want. They're like, <laughs> you know, and so being inducted, that was like a huge thing for us. And that was back in 2013 when we did Pinnacle and everybody was there. Everybody Sick. was there. The whole fucking like legacy of members was there. And I'm, yeah. I can't believe we don't have a video of that. I mean, maybe we got some cell phone video of it, but uh, we mailed Josh uh, out in Australia, his award, but everybody got their little, little thing. And it was really cool, but we're all one, you know, you mentioned that like it was a bit of a suffocation reunion. Nah. Was Mike Smith there? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, again, sometimes difference of opinion. Sure. Uh, and difference of creative and even life, you know, difference of opinions in life, not just the band, cause people to go in different directions. Um, even if it was aggressive at, at times, it's still at the end, we're all, we're still all one. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, there's no point in us ruining this beautiful thing 
we the torch in the best of my to the best of my ability you know and by now i feel like i got a decent handle on it but uh if it wasn't for Richards, I wouldn't be the player that I am today. Chris Richards was one of my biggest inspirations still to this day. I love everything that that I heard that shaped me. And I mean, I haven't heard him play in a million years, but best sound and best style and ability and stuff. So with, you know, the Alex Webster's, the Steve DiGiorgio's, Tony Choi's, Chris Richards, you know, those guys. And so to be able to like, you know, we're not, I'm speaking for myself here, we're not vindictive people. And uh, we're just fortunate that like Long Island, everybody's still here. Everyone that made that band from here is here with the exception of Josh and uh, Guy. Guy Marche ends up moving down to the Carolinas and Josh is in uh, in Australia, but everybody else. Said, oh, and then Dave Cole Ross is down in the Carolinas as well. So, but Cole Ross was there, Smith was there, Bones was there, me, Guy, Cerrito. Uh, That's Frank, fucking killer, dude. I, it, was, it was an awesome induction ceremony, man. It was really cool. It yeah. was it was. I hope you guys put that video up online, man. I would love to see yeah, it. You know, I think there was footage of it, and I feel like it was lost in the, remember the legacy of violence, the, the DVD that we had been telling everyone that was coming out. Now we're going on a whole nother tear, but this is the new man. interview, but that's the idea. It was a, they were, we had a 20 years of, it was called 20 years of violence or the legacy of violence, 20 years history of suffocation and got this video editor guy that was awesome and, came and filmed the recording of blood oath and uh edited a bunch of stuff he filmed that induction ceremony and then it was so bizarre because uh a lot of stuff was shot on tape and not digital or whatever and then the guy had got us some trailers teasers and stuff put together to show us been paid and everything he's our friend and next thing you know he's like uh oh my system failed or something so there's this big hang up he lost a lot of his work he gets it all the way built back up. Now, this is the suffocation curse we won't go too deep into. He oh, gets man. the thing all the way built back up. His fucking house gets robbed. All the, the equipment with the fucking hard drives of data and the fucking now at the end. Oh, he's done this twice now. He goes, I'm not doing this a third time. And we're like, fuck. So we're like, can you give us anything? All he had was a cardboard box full of some of the tapes. Some of the original footage tapes, it's like, I don't even know where the fuck that shit is. It was such a disappointing moment oh, in our. Oh my God. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to touch on that. We got good no, shit. No, bro, going. talk whatever you want. Talk whatever you want. Man. A, like, you know. That was more about, uh, that was that footage probably was was there. And then also that, uh, <clears throat> I was thinking that, uh, the camaraderie, you know, we've all just been friends forever, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for your words about Mike and stuff like that. And dude, it sucks about like about yes. losing all that footage, man. Because I know I speak for yeah, many everybody people that, that like we want to see like a, you know the history of suffocation and everything. That's that old. Like, that's old, old, old subject. By now, so much time's gone along that sure. the last two records, no one's even talked about it. But man, you know how hard that was to do the interviews, Blood Oath and Pinnacle, and like, hey, what's up with that that DVD you guys promised yeah. us? You know, we're like, I wish. You know, what yeah. are we going to do? We're going to go make this at we're musicians. You know, that was a video yeah. guy who got fucked twice. And then yeah. he was like, but it was fucked up. He was paid and everything. You know, he was like, dude, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. He's got his police. I'll say, I'll, say police too, <laughs> I'll say this too. Like, it's it's hard to like find. There's, there's, there's some good videos of you guys like on, on YouTube. But damn, I certainly wish there was a lot more, you know, a like real even if it's, yeah, like a, like a, you know, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, something put together you know even the ones but some of the ones are, are really really good like i said i'm always on on you know a suffocation binge and watching all these all these Hell shows yeah. Like that. So, Hell yeah real quick i was going to mention um so what happened for people that don't know there's a video of them of you guys playing live uh, i forgot exactly where it was at but you had a cast on your leg that now and, uh, are you on a tight schedule because i would I'm, love to continue this this is so fucking bizarre that you were just watching that because we were just talking about this <laughs> so we go out and play a show in LA and Terrence brings his passport and uh, it gets, I don't know if this is the night. I think it was the night that we played a long ass set in LA key club. We played like a two hour set. We played an hour and after the show, Terrence goes to grab his shit. His passports got stolen. So all of a sudden his passport got stolen. We got Europe. He can't get his new passport in time my leg gets fucking snapped in half that's where this story goes so june 6 2006 666 upstate new york near woodstock in new york right here 666 party dying fetus stripper pole open bar of course we're going 
Wait, Terrence. Terrence is like, fuck no, I'm staying home. I'm painting my door with goat's blood. I'm not going out. Fuck you guys. It's evil last night. And in retrospect, he was right. But uh, so <laughs> long and story, long and short, I multiple spiral fracture tibia, fibia, both bones. I might be saying them backwards, tibia, fibia. I don't know which one's which, but both the bones between my knee and the ankle, like <clears throat> goes one way to oh. go until they spiral the fucking, your shin bone getting tapped sucks. Mine and fucking, oh. <laughs> I can see your face. There's like, yeah, gnarly. So, yeah, brutal. So I got an x-ray that says 666 that shows this shit fucked up. <laughs> so long and short of that, we go to Europe. I'm on crutches with no Terrence. That's like, it's Mike Smith, Frank, Guy Marche. Guy. And, and this is fucked up. Yeah, you're seeing suffocation, no guitar solos. Yeah. Cut, we cut all the solos. And uh, 666, so I guess you're only playing in the self-titled. Yeah. Blood Oath wasn't out yet. So that's mm-hmm. fucked up. That's fucked up. So that's how that 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 happened. <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, yeah, we didn't get to see your your trademark. Uh, well, that's stance. where it starts. This is where it starts. Oh. Think about this. I play like a standard. Think about that. If if you got your regular regular guy with a well, grab homeboy strap, you got your left. You're a regular righty. Let's do a full a full blown lesson. You're a baseball pitcher. Okay. Yeah, you're a baseball pitcher. You know, yeah. you're throwing you're throwing the ball down to the pitcher with the left ah. foot. You're a guitar player. You got that same stance. This is straight to the front of the stage. So when this leg got broken, I'm a skateboarding punk from being a kid. Oh. I stretch my foot. And now all of a sudden, this is my back foot. And then fuck that thing. Grab this motherfucker. And this is where... There the, is. The hoof. Yeah, this is where the hoof goes straight to the ground. This foot now, this foot going straight forward. And then this foot goes like this. And now one thing there leads to is. another. Now we got this unique thing. And, you know, that's terrible. Like, if you ask me, hey, you want to break your fucking leg this June 6th? I would have been like, fuck no. But now, if you said, would you take that back? No way. Cause now I got something unique yeah. from something tragic. Yeah, it shaped it shaped you like for <laughs> somehow yeah. it's like Weird. I mean they're talking I about was... taking a positive from a negative, man. Fuck. Big time, big time. <laughs> that was like the worst. I couldn't imagine. I yeah. hammered, you know, because we go to the thing and it's like open bar. Yeah, bitches spinning around on poles, yeah. dying fetus is playing, and it's like, all right, Jack Daniels in a beer, cool. Yeah. All right, I'm done with my beer. Back. Let me get another Jack Daniels in a beer. Bam. I'm on my like fourth or fifth one. I'm not driving. You know, I'm not got nowhere to go, nowhere to be. I'm responsible. I'm healthy. Can do this every once in a while, whatever it is. And next Mm -hmm. thing you know, my guitar player guy comes up to me hammered because he was matching. He was trying to keep up. Oh, shit. When I'm wrecked, I know it. I'm holding (laughs) up a wall. This motherfucker was running around like he was a frat girl, you know, at the fucking pep rally it was sick yeah i love you guys yeah, yeah. and uh he came up apologized for knocking the wind out of me at vakin gives me the kiss to death and falls but my foot stays he weighs 200 pounds i weigh 150 pounds we do the 350 pound twist my foot stays and we fall that way and it just felt, i felt oh. it. He was so, he was so hammered you know i felt it and uh he was so hammered he was picking me up using my bullshit line he's like walk it off walk it off i'm like look down motherfucker he starts puking all over the place because he saw this my leg was hanging all crazy i was wearing pants so you just saw it wasn't like shorts because that would have been even way gnarlier to see it see it but did it break break skin too uh only poked out a little here but uh wasn't massive compound fracture but it was multiple spiral fractures i have the x-rays it's fucked up i should post those (laughs) <laughs> should post those online, make people bug out. They say six, six, six on them, you know. <laughs> but uh, what's super bizarre was, uh, yeah, when he's like, walk it off. He was dragging me around. He was so, and I'm like, look down. I mean, and shouting over dying fetus and titty juice flying everywhere, you know. So booty sweat. And yeah, when he saw that, he's like, Ugh. and then it was wild. The band stopped and everybody, you know. So that's a whole nother subject, the aftermath. But uh, it got it created something unique from yeah. a tragedy. So I wouldn't yeah. change it now. At the time, you want to break yeah. your leg tonight? Fuck no. 
mm-hmm. but knowing what I know now, I wouldn't change it for the world, you know, cause I got Fuck something. Yeah, dude. That, that, that your stance, man, it's just fucking brutal. You're a monster on stage. Dominate. That's, I, that's one of the things I love about Suffolk, man. It's just like, I mean, so I much, mean, man. Yeah, dude. Like, and, and you, you had gone from the, and like, I love BC rich guitars because yeah. just, they, they look fucking metal as fuck. They're but so now you converted, uh, you converted to the one that you just showed us. Um, tell us about your new guitar. I've got a couple of these. Um, this guy's out of Düsseldorf, Germany. And uh, oh. that guy, guy, <laughs> guy Marche, we were in Europe one year at a festival and he's like, comes, wakes me up. It's like, come on, dude, we're at a festival. And I'm sleeping, you know, we're in the bus parking. I'm like, dude, what do you want? You know, I'm being typical. I'm walking through this booth, uh, to a booth at a festival in Germany. And uh, this guy, it's, uh, his company's called The Devil's Choice. Ooh, nice. The Devil's Choice. I'm like, okay, well, what do we got here? <laughs> Let's see what, what we have here, you know? And <laughs> I walk in and I see this, uh, this really crazy bass. It was like one of the only basses I think he had at the event. And uh, I have it right here. I can show you right here. It'll probably probably be a decent representation right here to be able to see here this. Uh... All right. So this thing is wild. The, like the quality of the craftsmanship was just incredible. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm talking over this. And just incredibly well-built instrument. Oh. And so when I saw this thing, I was like, yo, man, seriously, like uh, he says to me, hey, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the band. Next thing you know, this guy's like, hey, would you ever consider playing? And I go, well, you know, I got to deal with BC Rich right now. It's pretty fucking sweet. You know, I love my BC Rich. They make me custom handmade, beautiful shit. Yeah. And I'm I'm like, I understand this is not cheap and I understand it's not free. Um, I said, unfortunately, unless you can give me a full ride, I'm going to stay with BC Rich. And he goes, I completely understand. And I said, look, man, if anything ever changes, please let me know. This is really high quality stuff. Not that I would want to turn my back on bc rich they were great to me very randomly the company gets sold bc rich gets sold right around the same time i'm still playing bc rich and i'm in europe and i told the guy you know if anything changes please let me know i'd love to have your contacts so we're playing a festival a year later year or so year and a half later and some guy runs up he's like i'm so excited i'm like me too what are we excited about and he goes you don't remember me and i'm like i'm so sorry man uh please remind me he goes, I'm the guy from the devil's choice. And I'm like, oh, shit, how you doing? What are we excited about? And he goes, I'm in a position to give you a full ride. And I'm like, whoa, what do you mean? <laughs> nice. At the same time, BC Rich was being sold. Yeah. So it's one of those random things that I was like, holy shit, right place, right time, met the guy. And uh, he had made me a couple of really cool um, bases. And at that point, I was content. I didn't need anything. I had everything I needed. And uh, so... At that exact moment, I was I was set. And then the next thing you know, he says uh, he had showed up the second year with this bad boy, this this crazy wow. motherfucker. That's so Very crazy. well, yeah, incredibly well done. You know, just American hand or excuse me, German craftsmanship. Like this guy's killing it. Uh, Mr. Designs Terrence. are crazy on that. Terrence, what's up? Yeah, we're about to get into some rehearsals. I'm wrapping this up. This yeah, is the no, no, this no, is the re- the redo. But check it out, like the unholy trinity. I mean, the guy went sick. The guy went I even really slanted pickups. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, really interesting because of the fingerboard. The fretboard is actually on that multi-scale thing. It's probably hard to tell. I can, I can. You want to get me your email? I can get you all these files just yeah, if you sure. want to have a better look. Yeah. But uh, I got to thinking. He had made me this. I'll send you all this stuff. So rather than doing that, he had made me this, yeah. and then I'll give you all the different shots of it. Yeah. And um and I put the links too of the company too. I'll put the links yeah, information. Wonderful, also wonderful. pre-sale I'll, I'll, in the description right here. So one night I'm I'm sitting on my phone and I just start sketching and then I, I sketch mm-hmm. this and I say to the guy, yo, can you do this? And he fucking did it. And the prototype he had brought me. He brought yeah, me I don't know if you know this, like too, when when before your video pops up on Zoom, that's yeah. I think it's that same sketch yes. that you have. I saw thing. that. Yes. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> he brings me this prototype. I play this thing for 17 shows. And he's asking nice. me, you know, what do you want to change about it? I mean, mm-hmm. incredible craftsmanship, 13 piece neck, unheard of. Wow. Five piece body, 13 piece neck, unholy trinity, the three humbuckers. Mm-hmm. I mean, multi-scale. I mean. Weight-wise, weight-wise, is it pretty heavy or has it feel? It's ridiculously heavy. 
Yeah. And I mean, for me, using those heavy, dense woods creates a uh, different sort of resonance. And yeah, electronics have a lot to do with the tone, you know, sure. because you're seeing people make a baseball bat into a guitar, a hockey stick. You know, yeah. it's a lot to do with the electronics, but sure. the woods do play a role. At what percentage, who knows? Yeah. But the idea is uh, he makes the prototype. I play it the following time I'm around. He asked me, what do I want to change about it? I don't have anything to change about it. And then, you know, right when I'm coming back over to play, what is it? We're coming over and we're going to play the uh, Netherlands Death Fest. Mm -hmm. He shows up with, <laughs> with, and this is called the creature, creature with Ooh. a K. So this is my model. So I was playing his trap jaw and now I'm playing trap the creature. So creature. the devil's choice guy out of Germany, this guy's killer, a nice. monster. Great. I'll send you all this stuff. I mean, the guy's an incredible luthier, super good, good guy. And uh, I mean, it, for what you get, you're getting a. have been playing this, this creature right here for, he gave it to me in March. The back plate used to say creature and the devil's choice and mm -hmm. March, 2018. So here we are five years later. That's the only thing that I had to replace in five years was the back plate because I sweat through it. He had laminated, he had laminated different. Uh, so like a black composite with a red composite with a black mm. composite. And then when the, the CNC machine wrote the words, it was black, but you could see the red through it because it had removed the black material. So I sweat through that that tone cover but other than that that's the only thing that's failed in five years and i mean i'm doing 150 200 shows this a year this thing is perfect yeah. you guys are towing machines man yeah very well made you know I've always joking like german engineering you know like these guys are very on top of precision you know now but with, yeah. be between the the bc ridge warlock that you had uh and this guitar and your playing style with it sitting on the ground does it you need like a special um what how do you protect that corner when it's sitting on the ground when when this was well these ones all of these ones i have a big stainless steel there's <laughs> a nice. big chunk of steel that the guy is looking look like it's right out of like the lord of the rings Fuck and when nice. we first did it um so when i was on the bc rich war like i could go down and grab that i'll send pictures of it how about that mm -hmm. so we could talk about what i used to do was just a uh, wrap gaff tape like duct tape sort of thing around it and um when i was talking about this guy and having him make it for me i basically said to the guy i go hey man uh you know i'm playing the thing on the ground like an upright and i go can i have like a spike or something that i can maybe screw on when i'm mm -hmm. going to play like an upright bass it has that that metal post with a rubber knob i was like maybe i could have some kind of spike you know and um i had said to him what about a spike? And he sitting there scratching his head and he goes, what about like a shoe? And I'm like a shoe. Yeah, and yeah. what we ended up with was the hoof. And it's like a fucking animal hoof. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's on the trap jaw. So that's a big chunk of stainless steel that he fits. I'll send you all these. So wow, you that's crazy. But it's and, <laughs> but before. Yeah. And you'll see on the BC rich, it was just a piece of, yeah. Like when he's in production, it's a big chunk of steel, man. It's crazy. But um, yeah, originally it was just some some tape wrapped around the, the bottom of head. It only goes in the stand upside down. When you oh, got a shit. guitar on stage, if you put it in, it'll just fall out because there's no headstock to catch on it. But yeah. you jam it. This is in Japan. I found out, oh, fuck, if you we're upside down, you know, dig a hole to China. Fuck it. I'm <laughs> in Japan. I'm like, let's put it upright for yeah. the U.S. And yeah. Yeah, that's the way it stuck. But Do you uh, need yeah. like a large case for that, too? Do you like to have a special it, case for that? It's it's in a big shock mount, a big road case. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it's it's too much. It's super heavy. And I mean, I just recently put wheels and shit on my case. I'll send pictures of all kinds yeah, of stuff. Cool, cool. Got some reference and stuff. But <laughs> yeah, man, when it comes to the gear stuff, I recently uh, hooked up with Ampeg. I mean, they're like everywhere in the world I go. Ampeg is the go to because I can always get it. I'd be endorsed with a company like Warwick at one point or PV for their amps, you know, all these, these, uh, companies and I'd go to the other, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to say I've worked with enough of these companies, SWR, uh, custom with a K Warwick PV. These are all amp manufacturers, but everywhere in the world I would go 
they would get me an Ampeg just because it worked and it was always available. Yeah. And now uh, from working with uh, the guy that, that works as an engineer at line six, Igor, uh, he's uh, animals as leaders, front of house engineer. We used him on a tour. Great guy. And at the end, he's like, are you happy with, with your company? I'm like, I love the equipment. It's sometimes these companies get bought and sold. And it's like, right when you think you have a really good artist relations guy, your AR guy's so awesome. He loves the band. The company gets sold. Oh, and then man, the yeah. AR guy get the, the company still around, but a different, different AR guy. And then the guy's like a country Western guy, suffocation, suffocation bass. What are you doing? Suffocating fish. You know, like, the fuck now I got this, this redneck guy getting at me and so either way the timing worked out I went to the devil's choice and then yeah. uh Igor thank you I got over with uh Dino over at uh Ampeg and I'm just so fortunate to to have all these awesome people that notice that suffocation is is not going anywhere you know we're just gonna no, definitely not definitely ripping not. albums and mm -hmm. no real intention on slowing down and I'm glad I'm glad to hear that Derek Boyer of Suffocation. We're talking hymns from the Apocrypha out November 3rd through Nuclear Blast. Your fifth album with the band to date, ninth album overall. Uh, thank you so much for your time, man. I don't know how long we've been chatting, but, you know, I appreciate all your words and all the great information from the gear, the history of the band. And uh, yeah. let's talk a little bit more about the album before we let you go. Uh, sure. As I was saying before, like this one kind of uh, has, brings back that organic sound from like the self title yeah. that you made your debut with. And uh, this one being Ricky's first uh, go at it on a record yeah. now yeah. that Frank has departed. Uh, tell us your thoughts on this new record. I really like it, you know, and uh, being that we captured the essence ourselves and that, you know, inline studios here, we there was so many moments, you know, like I'll let me give any past example. I would enter a studio going, man, I really love this. And then end up liking something else and then really loving something that I didn't think I was even ah, was still good. But then, wow, I really, so this one had a couple of moments where I was like, Oh, okay. Ah, oh, okay. And it ended on a, yeah, fuck yeah. And you know, Christian Donaldson doing the, in, uh, the mass mixing and mastering, uh, engineering on it he was so great to work with and i think we captured that that essence of our energy which is sometimes hard to do like we said some of the producers get their hand in and they put their vision on it and this was good to have terrence you know saying this is time we're gonna capture <laughs> he said i was like no way so yeah it was a good thing though you know because now like we said you know potentially doing other acts he can build his studio we can do a single if we want you know there's other sure. things that we can do now just if we're hot, we're like, Hey, let's do this. Okay. Let's get down in there and do it. You know, yeah. wired up. Hit, hit record, man. Always hit record. That's you right. know, when those ideas are just going to flow, man. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So um, how, how long did the writing process take from, you know, that first idea and then up until like the recording, and you know, you that hit, was, like, cut. That, that's, it's so hard because if, if it was like, okay, you finished your touring cycle, you're yeah. done, you're done, you're done supporting and promoting that one and you're going to start today and how long will it take if you could add up the the hours that it took of writing it's it's really hard to say because i mean right after of the dark light came out seraphim enslavement was written like oh. pretty fast and that was everybody you know i started with the beginning stuff charlie wrote the middle stuff terrence wrote the end stuff i had started the lyrics ricky had picked it up and finished it and he had flip-flopped a couple times on uh the title and where it was going and then that was the first one that was made all the way down to Descendants was the, the most recent one. And Descendants was put That's together. One of my favorite tracks, too. Descendants has got something yeah. really special about that it. That big That's, opening is like, oh, man. Yeah. That's Terrence being being musical, having something <laughs> creative that's unique. Yeah. Because, you know, death metal, okay, palm mute and fast pick. Sure, sure, yeah. But, you know, those are your go-tos. But when it got many decades of of creating and performing and learning developing techniques mm -hmm. he pulled that that opening piece out with that and we were like whoa that's very unique and terrence and i put that song together in like two or three days nice. but some of it has a good opening too like it it's like not yeah, just like it's a lot of bands like they kind of rush into it like here's the opening yeah. and then go right into the song now this one like this one is like dragged out and it's like well that's that's his let it breathe 
Yeah, mm-hmm. he's saying, you know, you got to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. And that's the problem, you know, like some of these songs in death metal today, like they just stop so abruptly. It's almost like someone just pulled the needle off the record. Okay, yeah. well, we've yeah. reached X amount of minutes worth of time, song's over, yeah. where yeah. he really, Terrence really wanted an extra rhythm in that song. Mm-hmm. But I thought that it was, you know, it was still complete the way it was. And I think we were looking at the clock and going, fuck, okay, if we're going to meet, this the other thing is a nuclear blast. We're super fortunate full supports what suffocation does and they don't try to get in and change us they believe in us so nuclear blast said hey you guys you know you're gonna release this record right and we say yeah okay why don't they say to us why don't we throw these three release dates at you november 3rd whatever the next cycle is and then whatever the cycle before it and they say okay so if you want to meet this release date you got to hand in all assets by this date right if you're gonna hand in all the assets for if you want this release date, hand them in by this day and this day. So we're looking at the deadline coming up and we're going, oh man, we're two songs short. Like mm-hmm. as far as being really settled on a record. And uh, we actually even took an extra two weeks, which kind of put Christian in a spot because he had other work lined up to, to mix mm-hmm. and master or to produce. And so we were like, Christian's like, where the fuck, where's the material? I mean, here's the drums, you know, where's the guitars? Where's the bass? So we're working out last minute stuff. And the last thing, you know, it's like Terrence goes, man, I'd really like to put more into this. And I go, well, you know, I don't know if we could push it back again, you know, because again, the same type of thing, you know, if you had infinite time when I was talking to my management about an extension, you know, they're like, well, if, you know, if you could have another two weeks, could you really make a better product? And I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Two weeks right now at the rate we're working, because we're working as if the deadline is Friday. And if you're telling me the deadline is now two Fridays later, if we keep this rate that we've been working at, this product will definitely be better. And at that point, we had already taken the extension and Donaldson said, I'd love to, but I can't. I've got other work. I can't push them off because then they won't meet their release dates because he's working. So the trickle effect. Yeah, and this is the the way my interview schedule went today. I apologize. That's how we got cut off. No apologies, necessary, man. I also spin off into overly yeah. detailing. No, I appreciate it. It was good to talk to you. <laughs> good stuff. And I like my understanding too is like uh, when it comes to vinyl, you got to give it as much time as uh, as possible too, because like I I don't know if it's still behind on production, but it's hard to get production done because of limited. It's uh, also companies. is very true. Yeah, if they're gonna have the the packages you know you want to get this package you know you can just buy the cd you want to buy the cd with the the cd the shirt and the poster that's oh the cd the vinyl and the sticker and the shirt you know there's all these different packages so for the record label to maximize on their release date and that's how we chart i didn't know that in order to chart on the you know who did well it's based on the amount of money that came in not the exact amount of units so if you put a package together that is fifty dollars, and it comes with a shirt and a sticker and a CD. That applies to your first week of sales, and that's how you end up charting on a Billboard chart or Heat Seeker chart, whatever it is. Yeah. Was it? But wasn't it back in the day based on units? Yeah, I mean, it's originally from units, and honestly, I wasn't there in the uh, '80s or whatever where it all <laughs> came, way before the '80s. But I mean, yeah. I'm thinking when death metal and metal and stuff was really doing its peak in the early days. Um, it is based on units. I don't think they can sell a t-shirt and call that a unit. Right. But at the end of the day, if they if you bought the CD and you chose the package that had the shirt and the sticker and the poster, that unit generated more income per unit. Uh, some and, and, and please don't call me. This is my rough understanding. But uh, mm-hmm. so yeah, needing to get the vinyl and needing the time for it all comes into play too. So pushing yeah. deadlines, you think if you had no no real debt and, and our management at one point said to us this is all weird stuff that maybe younger bands don't take into factor you know when you're doing it yourself you put it out when you want you spend as much time and money manufacturing producing a product when you're on a schedule like this okay first of all they're like hey here's your deadline hand in your assets for this release date all of a sudden the managers and booking agents and promoters they all start working on tours album release tours and if you miss this deadline, not only do you push back your release date, you just botched all this work. Cause now what are you going to go out and do a tour to support a record that you don't have in your hand? Yeah. So this whole thing is a domino effect. 
you got to get yeah. everything done by this day to give them ample time so they can do it. And then right when all that's done, that's when the managers are hustling with the booking agents and promoters and stuff to make sure that they get a tour that coincides. And then they're competing with all the other tours. So they're trying to squeeze you into a slot. As soon as you, one domino gets pulled out, the whole thing stops running. Yeah, you know? yeah I feel you, man. Cool. Uh, again, Derek Boyer. Suffocation has a history of uh, re-recording old songs. This one you took from Breeding the Spawn, which back in the day when I was starting to get into death metal, that tape, Breeding the Spawn, was one of the first ones I got. And I was, yeah. and since then, I was a, been a fan. And you guys uh, re-recorded Ignorant Deprivation. What led to that decision? That record from 1993 uh, didn't have the best production. Uh, if that was your first introduction to Suffocation, you fell in love with it because that's what you had. And then if you went back and found Effigy, you went, whoa. And then two years after you got Pearson Within, you went, whoa. You know, this is yeah. before me. So I'm saying from my sure, perspective sure. that... um Growing up, seeing them come to town, playing so sick was a big inspiration. 30 years later, here we are. But uh, the idea that Breeding the Spawn didn't have your favorite production, and uh, at least for most people. And some people really like it. I'll go to South America or Japan, and some people are like, fuck you, Breeding the Spawn's the best one. So yeah. it's interesting. But yeah. for the band, they wanted more Pierce from Within, Despise sure. the Sun. You know, They wanted this tight, punchy, and... That album, we've been re-recording one song off that record, and we are one away. So there was only <laughs> two left. There was only two left. Like if you do the do your homework, do resurrecting the spawn. You got a CD booklet, you know, prelude to repulsion taken from the self-title. Boom, flip to the next one. Beginning of sorrow taken from Pinnacle of Bedlam. Boom, flip to the next page. So yeah. in theory, one more album and we record one more breeding the spawn song we could release resurrecting the spawn this is kind of my little brain oh child. damn <laughs> and this would not only be cool because you'd have to remix and master as much of it as you could because sure. we don't have some of them we're just down to a master but uh you could probably try to remix a lot of the newer ones more recent ones and release this thing and not only would it be say somebody only got this a young fan new fan Whoa, I've never heard of this band, Resurrect and Spawn. They put it on, like, holy shit, and they flip it up. Whoa, this song was taken from the 2007 release. This, this one, this song was taken from the da da da. So the Japanese release of Souls to Deny has uh, anomalistic offerings on it. Oh, so, that's, it that's another, so that's a hidden one that most people didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Breeding the Spawn is on Pierce from Within. Mm -hmm. you know, if you go down the line, you know, Prelude's on Self Title, Beginning of Sorrow's on Pinnacle, uh, or Breeding the Spawns on Pierced, uh, Marital Decimations on Blood Oath, Anomalistic's offering, uh, Anomalistic Offerings is on the, the Japanese Souls. Um, I'm missing something, but if you do your homework, you could figure yes. out where these are all coming. So Ignorance on this new one. And uh, there's one other one that I'm forgetting. There's one on Pinnacle, I think. that. Uh, yeah, Pinnacle's got Beginning of Sorrow, I want to say. Either way, so if we do, now that we have the studio here, we could just go and bang out a single and be resurrected. You know, you never know. So yeah, That's pretty cool. Hymns from the Apocrypha, November 3rd through Nuclear Brass, Derek Boyer, beast bassist here. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for your time, dude. Uh, much love. Appreciate you. Hails and a horns to everybody in the suffocation camp. Terrence, um, Especially Frank, man, if uh, and and if you talk to Mike too, like a big yeah, all the guys, salute, big salute to all those guys. Much love, you know, from a diehard Suffocation fan. And any any words that you want to give uh, new fans and old fans about the new album? Yeah, I mean, uh, our old fans, you're gonna like it or you're not gonna like it because uh, you know we know when you lose one of your favorite members, it's hard to take Axl Rose out of Guns and Roses. You know, I get it. <laughs> but again, you know, if uh, Axl was like, hey, look. We got a fucking suitable replacement. The boys support him. I support him. If you hear the live album, Frank passes the torch to Ricky, says, I'm not going to be doing it, but that doesn't mean you can't still like suffocation. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, that's fine too. You know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. We think we're still moving in that same direction. We know we're moving in that direction. If you don't think so, that's on you. But yeah. Uh, yeah. suffocation is going to always be suffocation. You know, I heard the best one I've ever heard. Everyone, you know, you'll every once in a while hear something along the lines of uh, suffocation should really consider a name change. Uh, uh, no, and no. I saw, no, this is great because I understand everyone's entitled to their opinion. I saw the yeah. best response to that I'd ever seen. 
it was from one of the comments here and i know you're not supposed to really look but somebody brought this up to me it was so neat the guy says so you mean to tell me you mean to tell me when a sports athlete retires from a sports team the sports team is supposed to change their name get the <laughs> fuck out of here you know so it was a really cool thing it was really cool to hear somebody back up and i yeah. never thought of that perspective you always want you, you like who you like, you know, sure, sure, right, right, right. This guy's inspired by this guy and this guy's mm -hmm. not in the band anymore. They better get somebody damn good. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, that legacy could get damaged. And it does to some people fine, but to okay. others and the new fans, I would say new fans look back, always go back and look through the discography, figure out, you know, where this band came from, but yeah. check out the shit, come see it live. I think that's where we really shine. I think we really truly shine. Uh, yeah performing live so come see it yep. witness it for yourself make up your own mind don't listen to anybody else fucking hey they're gonna come through with incantation too that's gonna be fucking killer such a rager Derek yeah. boyer oh real quick how's guy doing guys guys, guys well good? he's doing yeah. really good yeah i just spoke with him the other day he's doing good it's it's funny we're all so tight you know like even yeah. though we're not playing on stage we're all still good friends and always well wishing you know you know what we're is, not his, is his health better? Like, because he was a uh... yeah, yeah. No, he beat he got a Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's pretty serious. And That's he serious. Was... That's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. He beat it. He beat it. You know, he did really good, and he's doing good. And we will always wish him the best. And everybody wish everybody sure. that's ever done it yes. or anyone that's ever been a part of it all of the best. Totally, totally, man. Hails and horns to everybody in the suffocation camp. Derek Boyer, suffocation hymns from the apocrypha coming out soon. Cheers, Derek. Much love, man. Cheers, thank you. Getting that Have stuff a good over. rehearsal. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, brother. It's going to be sick. We'll be seeing you soon. Hey, be yeah. sure to uh, come out. We've got an LA show. Is that where you'll be? I'll be there, dude. You got For my sure. number. Yeah. You'll be on the guest list. You'll be on the guest list. You come out, hang with us. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you so awesome, much. Awesome, brother.